Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show. We have a great show today. We're going to talk about uh, religion, politics, you know, all the things that they tell you not to discuss. Uh, Vin, how you doing? A little worried about that, but otherwise good. <laughs> well, we've decided that we needed a little help in this. And uh, a few weekends ago, I, I had the, the great opportunity to attend a mental health summit where we got to speak with a pharmaceutical company, specifically Synovian, uh, just about different things of of really living with with mental illness. And they had a, a great little, well, okay, hang on. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, we have Katie Dale, who runs the Hi. great website. Hi, Katie. Uh, who runs the great website Bipolar Brave. And before we get any further, can can you introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely. I'm 29, and I am currently married in almost eight years to my husband, Chris, who is in U.S. Air Force, going to be officer by the end of this week. And um, we have known each other for about nine years. And let's see, going back to when I was 16, uh, a junior in high school, I had switched from a public high school to a private Christian school. And during that time, I had fallen into a severe depression. Um, long story short, I was hospitalized for bipolar disorder. Uh, fast forward eight years when I was 24 and been married three years to my lovely husband. And I decided it was time to go off my medicine. I had felt great. had been prayed over. I was uh, at the peak of my game, so why not? Um, unfortunately, that was the wrong choice, uh, suffice it to say. And I en ended up in and out of the hospital for about two months. But fortunately, I got back on the medicine I was on and came out of the woods. I've been out of the woods for about five years now and just living life, loving life, and blessed to have this opportunity with you guys today to share a little bit about myself. Thank you so much. We're we're really glad that you're here too. It was it was great meeting you. Why were you chosen for the the mental health summit? We were all chosen, I mean, obviously because we had bipolar disorder. But uh, what do you think put you on the radar to get selected? Was it the website, some advocacy work that you had done? Well, actually, I uh, am friends with the publisher of BP Magazine, Joanne Doan, and uh, she reached out to me recently and asked me if I'd like to join y'all on that summit because she was there and she was invited and they partnered with Synovian. So I had the privilege of going on the trip. Uh, it was great. So that's how well, I got there. I, I, I am really glad you were there. So let me set this up for a moment. One of the things that we were given was a task to write a letter to somebody, whether it be uh, our past selves, our future self, uh, somebody that helped us along the way, maybe somebody that didn't help us along the way. And, and we all picked, you know, various people. People wrote their their families. People wrote their parents. I, I wrote an open letter to bipolar disorder. And Katie wrote a letter to her pastor. And the first thing that I want to say is I, I'm not very religious, but it it spoke to me a lot. And, it, and it's it felt like a topic that we needed to cover on the show. So I discussed it with Vin. Vin, say hey. Hey. And Vin and I decided that what we needed was Katie. So to set this up correctly, we asked Katie to read her letter, the same letter that she read at the at the mental health summit. So Katie, can you read it for us? Yes, I can. And it just as a disclaimer, though, um, this is a pastor that did not actually directly pastor over me. So if anybody has any questions, he was one of those televangelist pastors. So just Wonderful. as a little context there. Perfect. Okay, perfect. so here's a letter. Dear Pastor, five years ago, you inspired me to go off my psychotropic medication and claim healing in Jesus' name. You said that if I believed enough, I would have it. True, unadulterated, life-changing healing. And you made it look so de desirable to be a missionary preacher. I would warn you today that you encouraged a very dangerous action. At your admonition of your ministry's profession, I believed your words. I stepped out on blind faith and went off my medication. It took me too long to realize I had really stepped off a cliff and nearly risked my life 
But your message that Jesus could heal fell on naive, unassuming ears, desperate to earn poster child status for being healed of bipolar disorder. The very evidence of the result of this dangerous act was debilitating and earth-shattering. God healed me, don't get me wrong, but I was not healed, mind you, through going off my medicine. I was healed when I was on my medicine. Unfortunately, my mind, body, and soul slipped into a manic psychotic mess of deranged hallucinations, voices in my head, and the devil in my mind. You didn't see the results of your proselytizing lies, but I experienced a world of demonic, psychotic, surreal, and unforgiving episode of bipolar psychosis. In part credit to you, I was forever changed. But God taught me his healing came by his sovereign hand in my cooperation with psychiatrists, therapists, and modern medicine. I fear for those who hearken to your messages, who gather to hear your convincing stories, who believe you to be preaching God's inerrant word, and I would warn them against believing you. In the Old Testament, God warns his people of false prophets. There are two kinds. Those who prophesy, and it fails, and those who prophesy, that comes true, and his people are let off to serve false gods. I pray for you and fear you're not preaching the total truth. You did not outright say to me, go off your medication either. But in your persuasive argument for healing with the faith we have inside ourselves, you made it look like a hat trick with just enough faith. Jesus warns us in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I am wary of listening to anyone now who goes about preaching, even in Jesus' name, the signs and wonders carnival. There are too many people who hurt and then look to find healing through faith, expecting that through enough prayer and proclaiming Bible verses, they will have an Acts account of miraculous power to transform their body or mind. God is in the business of saving souls, not necessarily putting on a magic show. My prayer is that you realize the fallacy of your message and that God may have mercy on you. We still live in a world that looks to clergy and people of faith to direct them to peace and hope. Sincerely, Katie Dale. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Katie. That's a very, very powerful letter there. You're welcome. One of the things that you said um, was that at the time that you stopped taking your medication, you felt great at the top of your game. Unfortunately, we do hear this quite a lot. Many people who go off their meds do it because they say, well, hey, I, I feel good. I don't need this anymore. And it never seems to click in their heads that they feel good because they're taking the medication. Right, right, absolutely. This is a great discussion. Let's step away from a moment. We're going to step away, hear a word from our sponsor, and we will be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. All right, and we're back talking with Katie. Katie, one of the questions that I have is, we hear this story a lot of people that have had a, a bad experience with religion, and a lot of people get very angry. Uh, they become angry at religion, they turn their backs on their religion, they get mad at people that are members of religion. One of the things that really, that really made you stand out in my mind is you kept the, I don't even want to say blame, but you, you put the responsibility of the actions on the pastor and you're still a very religious person. Is that correct? Technically, I wouldn't call myself religious, but uh, I do have a strong faith and I, and I hold a, a relationship to Jesus as my first place in life. I don't like calling myself religious because it's got the connotation of why well, do this out of duty, but I don't do it out of duty at all. I don't do it out of duty at all. I do it out of a love for Jesus and what he did for me on the cross. And that in my mind is uh, a big difference. The thing that I found most powerful about your message was the lack of anger. 
Um, there, there's a lot to be angry about when it comes to recovering from mental illness and, and not just when it when it wraps around religion or politics or family. Just there's just a lot to be angry about. And when I heard your letter, you know, somebody talked you off your meds, which is, as you yourself said, could have had disastrous consequences. And you went into a, a teaching mode and, and uh, an educational mode. You You wanted to help other people understand that this isn't the way but you didn't have any anger. And believe it or not, that's unusual. Can can you speak to that at all? I can understand why some people um, may be angry with somebody who convinces them that they don't need their medicine, and especially somebody who they look up to, like a clergy person. But I guess one thing is is that, you know, it's not my place to judge them. I, I'm, I'm hoping I don't sound like I'm judging either. In the, in the letter, I'm simply saying, look, I made the mistake, but you kind of helped me there. So um, it's the onus is on both of us, I think. So in terms of anger, like, and, and I'm one of those types of people who really rarely gets angry. I just feel like I, I have a lot of compassion for people. I kind of see people as, you know, making mistakes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand. But, um, I mean, I'm not going to hold it against him. I mean, there, that's not my place. It's, not to condemn or judge somebody for um, even if he thought he was doing the right thing, you know, especially if he was think, thinking he was doing the right thing by preaching what he was preaching. So, um, yeah, I don't find there's any place for anger in there. There there wasn't. And that I did not feel that you came off judgmental at all. You, you stuck to the facts. You stuck what happened as the basis of the decision. And you asked the person to look into themselves to come up with better advice for the next person. And then you yourself resolved your issue. And that's that's really what spoke most to me. I, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be furious if, if there was a part in my history where somebody that I trusted helped me, even though I would have some culpability there too of choosing to go off my meds. But if somebody was standing there encouraging me to do it, I would be furious at that person. And I listened to you talk and, and we spoke afterwards and you just, you just had a lot of understanding and compassion for the situation. And especially when we're dealing with, with religion uh, and, and pastors and authority figures, it's so easy to become angry and you didn't. And I found that to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, well, then why why do you think people get angry at the religious leaders or the? Well, Katie, I that? I think I think the reason is because when you have an authority figure, whether it's a a, a figurehead in religion or government or, or or your parent even, and they give you information that is bad, it's it's easy to to feel that you have been manipulated, and okay. who's not going to be upset about that? So I think really? it's I think it's fairly easy to get angry about such things. But as you pointed out, if the person says these things because they actually believe it and not just out of abject stupidity, then it's it's easier to be understanding about it. I'm like you. I, I find it very, very difficult to get angry at, at human beings. Now, when a piece of technology doesn't work, then I'll I'll get pretty pissed off, honestly. So, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see the occasional dent in my computer screen, but you know, people are such complex and emotional beings that we have to cut them some slack. Except, of course, where there's mm -hmm. some outright charlatans out there, as Gabe and I have both seen. People who are claiming that you can cure schizophrenia by meditating on it or having your mm -hmm. chakras adjusted or some crazy thing like that. And it's like, come on, mm -hmm. you know, you can't honestly believe this. Can yeah. you? Well, I would think that there is some explanation of um, reasoning and in the person who's mentally ill. I'm thinking that there's there's a link of some reasoning because you wouldn't just outright believe somebody who is blatantly telling you a lie. But if it looks like it's appealing and a possibility, there there forms a, a path towards plausibility, I think. And when somebody who is sick in their mind doesn't recognize something like that, it's one, it's probably due to their sickness, but two, it's like you want to, you want to get better. Um, and, and, and in people's desperation. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. People desperate mm -hmm. to find a fix will grasp mm -hmm. at almost anything. I, I've often said that it's one of the, the saddest parts or hardest parts, or it, it, in my mind, most difficult parts, the, the desperation 
of mental illness. When I was at my my lowest lows in depression, I I would have done anything, and it it would have made me an easy target. So, yeah, Katie, you're one of the kindest people that I've ever met. I I, I know we only you know talked in person for a day and and exchanged some emails, but you have a real way mm-hmm. about you where you 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 see the best in people. Is that who you are in real life? I mean, do you, do you see the best in people just in general? Yes, I do. To a fault. I do. What's, what's the key to that? And I mean this sincerely. I I mean, you know, I, I am, I am, I am a very pessimistic person. I'm not saying that I see the worst in people because I love people, but I, I'm a cynic. I'm cynical. I, I admit it. I, I have anger issues and not just at technology like Vin. I, I get angry at people all the time. Uh, and I think to myself, just as trying to improve myself, you know, how can I take this down a notch? And what would you say to me if I said, hey, Katie, can you help me be less angry and less cynical towards the human race? What's your advice? It's easy to get bitter when we hold on to things for a while and don't forgive. And with forgiveness, there's grace. And I think when you believe and you finally forgive yourself and are able to let go of things that you've done wrong um, and give yourself a second chance, that can be key. And also believing that giving people the benefit of the doubt can be very empowering to them and to you. People are angry at God a lot. Um, I feel like we are so not in control of things. We think we are, but we're not. Um, we, we can only control what we do and how we think. And when we realize that we're out of, you know, we don't have the controls, then we can realize, you know, what's the point of getting angry? I mean, you're, you're going to react and you're going to make things worse in most cases, <laughs> I think. <laughs> That's and a good it doesn't make sense to waste all your energy if you take a step back, breathe. Um, look at the big picture. Is it really worth getting upset over? What if it is something worth getting upset over? You know, you need to make the correct choices to next time to learn from it. Or if you, you know, if you can't control it and if you can't control it, avoid the situation, have boundaries, you know. It sounds like you're saying anger and cynicism have never resolved anything. Mm, I wouldn't say they never resolved anything. I think there's a time and place to be angry. But in a, it's in a, it's it's a, it's a means to an end, not the end in and of itself. I think it's being angry is you know a process. You got to identify with it if you're feeling angry. You can't just ignore your feelings. You have to work them out though. You have to hash it out. What's the issue? You know, why am I feeling this way? And what did the person do to me, toward me? And what you know can I do to appropriately change the situation? Can I you know? Um, can I expose myself less to this person or, um, if it's in case of faith, you know, God, why did this happen to me? You know, I don't, I, I don't ever ask, you know, why, because I know there's a reason and be it whether I know it or not, if the reason is or not, I can still live my life and trust that God is in control and that. Um, his reason, I may never know. I may never know why I went off my meds. I might, I mean, at the bottom of it, I don't think I'll ever understand why I went through the psychosis I went through when I thought I heard voices in my head or when I was experiencing ups and downs like I did. But I think it's a matter of letting go, forgiving yourself, and trusting that there's a reason why it's going on and that you can be a part of solution we're, we're we're near the end of our show and this is the the final question that i have if if the pastor in question if you had sent that letter and, and the pastor received it how do you feel that he would react or he or she how do you feel they would react i'm thinking i'm actually you know i say i'm i think the best of people but this kind of person i don't know if i think the best of them actually because uh, i don't think they would accept it they're just probably, and I could be wrong. They might look at it and say, oh, well, but the chances are, <laughs> you know, they're right. probably not going to look at it and say, oh, well, I, I shouldn't be, you know, that's their whole ministry is telling people you have the faith, you can be healed. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you're going about doing that. And, and, and I think in some cases it does work. I don't get me wrong. I, I really think miracles happen. So 
there's those cases. But in the case of mine, on many other people that are looking for help through psychiatric care, there's a reason why there's doctors and, and medicine and, and scientists in that field. It's, it's working. It's working for people. And I think God uses that as a tool for, you know, the grace of medicine. I truly believe it is a grace that God's given it an insight and wisdom to doctors to be able to explore this field. So that we can experience healing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really do appreciate it. Uh, you were fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Vin, any last words? No, I just wanted to, to echo that it was great having you on the show, and we, we certainly appreciate your perspective. Well, thank you guys for being open and uh, having me on the show, and uh, it's been great. So oh, you're very welcome. It too. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. If you have an opportunity, please review, share, and subscribe to the Psych Central Show podcast on iTunes or whatever service that you use. Remember, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere is available. Talk with a licensed professional therapist online now. Go to betterhelp.com. Thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email TalkBack at PsychCentral.com.